Clouds, and then my name is called Cloud 34. Me today, talk about uh, another model, and this time I'm going to talk about this one. It's the Carnegie Collections Krylophosaurus. Now, uh, Krylophosaurus um, is a Tetanurin from around 194 to 188 million years ago. Um, now, it was found in the Hansen Formation in. The which was also formerly known as the upper area of the upper Falav formation. Um, now the specimen was discovered. Now the type specimen was discovered in 1991, and um, yeah, it was found in Antarctica. Um, and it was possible. I think it was the first non-avian dinosaur that was described. I believe. Um, yeah, I think it was the first non-avian dinosaur described from the area uh there was another there was a couple more dinosaurs discovered then but they weren't described now it was around six to eight meters long and probably weighed in about 1025 pounds which would actually make it the largest theropod in that area so it's pretty big um now the pre the sort of uncertain of where it actually lies within tetanurin so currently it's just classified as tetanurin now in my opinion i believe it's Possibly a, a sort of advanced, um, maybe maybe an advanced uh, coelophysid. Uh, I'd say just just from the characteristics, the skull shape, the premaxillary shape, the, just the, the elegance of the actual creature. Um, the only thing that stops me from being definite is just the anatomy of the skull and the whole anatomy of the actual body. Which, if you look at the skull proportionally, it's it's quite big. But um, yeah, it depends. But anyways, let's get into the model. Um, now this was done in, I believe, it was done in 2000 and, hang on, let's look at the date, 2010, so it was made in 2010 this, so it's about six years old, not bad for six years, um, now it doesn't have any feathers, uh, it does have the tripod stand, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, it doesn't matter, um, oops, <laughs> now, I'm sorry about the camera, but obviously you've got a bit of shrink, shrink wrapping, uh, but it's not that much. The paint scheme is really good. Um, it does give off that Arctic, Antarctic kind of like look, which is really good. Um, the one thing that I really loved about this this just this figure is so bizarre, and it's got such a long tail as well. I do like my dinosaurs with long tails, and maybe if you're an expert in like making him stand, make him get standing like that, and he's like, Rah. um, now there's what I do also like is the dry brushing on the top. Um, it does. I mean, on camera it doesn't look that good, but it does look quite good. It looks really dark uh, when you look at it. The crest, again, I mean, the crest, it's got those little, it's blue, uh, but it's on the back. It's got little grooves on the back. You can't really see that well in the camera, but you've got little grooves, and they've they've been dry brushed, so it looks really nice. Um, it kind of reminds, the crest actually kind of reminds me of like a bivalve or a brachiopod, well, no, a brachiopod, actually. So that's why I found this dinosaur quite funny looking. Uh, now, the type species, uh, which is the only species, uh, Cryolophosaurus elioto, or, I mean, sorry, elioti, um, was formerly known as Elvosaurus, um, because the, the quiff, the whole quiff with the, you know, Elvis Presley, uh, king of rock, um, I think, I'm okay, no, yes, no, no, I don't know my music, I'm sorry, um, but the underbelly is just bland, but the throat has got that little blue... Area. So that that obviously the blue crest and the blue underneath area here tells me it's a male. Um, the claws are really nice as well. I do like the claws. They're quite nice. They're quite well done. Uh, they it looks like they're a mixture of two greys, which is nice. So it gives a bit of depth. Uh, the skin is really cool as well. I do like that. Um, it's a grey animal, so it and so it definitely it helps with these silo um kind of origin. But then again, I could be proven wrong. It's because um, they've only, I think they found, like, this area here. They found a lot of the area post of the pre-maxilla, maybe half the maxilla. I can't exactly remember what material they found. But that's the issue with it. Uh, they're not so sure about it, and yet they haven't, I don't think they've been back there recently. So, yeah, but it's just, I think they went back and they've discovered Cretaceous rock, but this guy lived in the early Jurassic, uh, Jurassic period, which was... You know, when dinosaurs, kind of dinosaurs were really starting to take a hold, in my opinion, because they were starting to evolve uh, quite into the forms that we know today. Um, now, he doesn't have a cloaca, sadly. Well, it does, but it's just, it's just, it just doesn't look that good. It's this little, it's this groove here, uh, if you can see. The feet are t 
tiny, in my opinion, but I don't mind it. I think it just it's just the pose that I love. Um, now, the tripod thing, that's an issue. Carnegie is known for giving tripod poses, but it's not that bad on this figure because it just it just kind of looks like he's kind of roaring. You you put him against like a background, a dark background, like Antarctic Night with um oh what are they call now uh the like oh I forget um but yeah getting getting him in a uh, Antarctic like area with woods and stuff like that having a diorama set that'd be really good. Um, so it just it just looks really nice. I'm I'm not gonna lie, it just looks really nice. I just like the golden paint with the white and the blue. It just it just can't I, honestly it compliments him, compliments the sculpt. It just compliments everything. Um, now what do I have any gra do I have any more grabs apart from apart from the uh, tripod? <laughs> uh no, I don't think I do. Um, apart from I'd say the grooves, the the top of the ant orbital fenestra where the uh. Yeah, so this part here, the nasal bone, the paint there exaggerates it a bit too much. And that's the only gripe I've got. It happens on both sides, but, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, so, size comparison time. So, uh, for overall length, I think he's about 21, 26, no, 26 centimetres. Let's have a look. He's about, so from nose to tail, he's about 20, 23 and a half, 23 and a half centimetres. Height wise, he's about from the top of he's about uh ten? He's about ten centimetres. He's about ten centimetres tall, so that's quite good. That's not a bad size figure. Um for a bit of size comparison, I'm gonna bring in a dinosaur that you know I got I got for my birthday from one from someone. Uh the Beckel Spinax. Now I've got them right next to each other there, and you can see the size comparison there. Uh the Beckel Spinax is just dwarfed. It's dwarfed. Like look at it, it's dwarf. And it's like Get away from me! No, 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 no. But yeah, this was one of the figures that I really wanted, and everything Dinosaur.com didn't have it, so I bought it from Dinosaur Time. They gave it. To me, uh, they had it on there for about six ninety-five, I think the price was. So not a bad price. It was like a couple of pence over the actual price on everything Dinosaur. But uh, yeah, this is a great figure. Um, I highly, I definitely highly recommend it. You've got to get your hands on it because it's just a wonderful piece. Uh, in my opinion, this wrong, this ranks in my top three. I say it's my top three with number one, uh, the number one Carnegie figure, uh, being the uh, Diplodocus. Uh, but yeah. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you later. Bye bye.